Hello, welcome to Roy's Book Reviews. I'm Roy. Today, I would like to talk to you about the novel Let the Great World Spin by Colin McCann. Uh, first thing um, I, like, I would like to say about this lovely, bittersweet novel is that I love its title. Uh, there's an author's note at the end um, explaining that it comes from the Alfred Lord Tennyson poem, Loxley Hall. Uh, which itself was heavily influenced by Arabic poetry written in the 6th century. As for Let the Great World Spin, the novel, it's somewhat difficult to give a concise synopsis um, because the book barely has a plot. It's basically a collection of wonderful short stories and some of the tales end up meeting at an intersection with one or two of the other tales. Every narrative crosses paths, even if in a slight superficial way with at least one of the others, but this is not to say that all of them connect to all of the others. One of the sections is based on a true event, something I came to learn in the author's notes. Um, so I'm glad I decided um, not to stop at the last line of the story. Instead, I ventured uh, a bit into the book's back matter. Um, that, that's where I learned that on August 7th, 1974, which was nearly one year to the day after construction of them was completed, a man named Philippe Petit walked a tightrope wire between the World Trade Center Towers. I was unfamiliar with this event until getting to the end of Let the Great World Spin. Colin McCann fictionalizes uh, Philippe Petit for a portion of this novel. But the main storyline isn't about the daring tightrope walker. It isn't about any of the people who witness that incredible event um, or the people who learn that it's taking place in um, the fantastical city of New York, um, which is a setting for um, the majority of um, the pages in this book. Um, it isn't about um, the judge um, whom the tightrope walker has to uh, come before after he's arrested. Um, it isn't about his wife. Uh, it isn't about the woman um, that the judge's wife ends up becoming close friends with in spite of their significantly different stations in society. Truth is, no storyline in particular takes top billing, but instead share it. The book starts out by introducing us to a man named Kieran, um, but we learn less about him than we do about his brother, Corrigan, who I initially assumed would be the book's focus. Corrigan is an interesting character. Not quite a priest or a monk, but basically he's, he's living a lifestyle that appears to be modeled on the modest one of Christ, except that while we read in the Bible only about um, one prominent prostitute whom Christ knew well, uh, Corrigan lives among a bunch of them. His home is a tenement apartment in the Bronx that never has a locked door so that his friends can use it as a place of refuge or a quick bathroom break in between tricks. Eventually, that pimp figures out that he is not competition or trying to interfere uh, with the street walking business um, and leaves Corrigan alone. Corrigan eventually succumbs to temptation of the flesh, though it isn't the proverbial hooker with a heart of gold that he falls for, but a widowed woman named Adelita who has two young children. The story abruptly leaves Corrigan um, when he along with one of the prostitutes, prostitutes he befriends, is killed in a car accident. The narrative then follows the people behind the wheel of, of the other car for a while. Later, it jumps to a woman named Claire, who is in mourning for the death of her son in the Vietnam War. Claire uh, meets at alternating homes with a group of other women who have lost their sons um, to the war as well. Uh, one of these women is Gloria, who ends up adopting the children of Jaslyn, 
who is a woman that gets killed alongside Corrigan in the car accident. Jaslyn's mother, Tilly, is also a prostitute, and eventually she takes a turn as the focus of the narrative um, from a prison cell where she is grateful to know that her granddaughters um, may have a way out that she was never able to provide um, for her daughter. Towards the end of uh, this book, we meet the adult Jaslyn, who is one of the two little girls who lost their biological mother in the car accident. And as a result, uh, escape being the next generation of women in the family to make ends meet as a prostitute. Uh, two people are in the vehicle that clipped Corrigan's van from behind on the highway, you know, causing it to spin out of control. Um, they are a married couple, both of them artists. Um, it's a hit and run crime that effectively ends not only the lives of Corrigan and Jaslyn, but also uh, this couple's marriage. Uh, while the husband, Blaine, wants to move on and act like the tragic event, um, which he does not believe was his fault, um, ever took place, uh, Lara is consumed um, by guilt that compels her to reach out to the people whose lives were upturned. In being drawn to the victims of the crime, she ends up meeting and subsequently falling in love with and marrying Kieran. I've touched on most, if perhaps not quite all, of the people who get a turn on center stage as Colin McCann lets his, ta his fine novel veer from character to character. Sadness permeates many of the pages in this book. There is plenty of pain and regret to go around. But as their lives crisscross with one another, or fail to do so, there is also hope for the promise of a better day. Life arbitrarily keeps and breaks such promises. It can sometimes feel as perilous as walking across a tightrope, stretched taut across the top of skyscrapers, and at other times be as wondrously miraculous a thing as falling into the arms of the person you are meant to be with. McCann patches chapters together in a manner similar to the movie Love Actually. Um, where there are multiple storylines um, take turns grabbing your attention. Every so often a connection of some kind is made between um, storylines. But in the end, you're left with no one story in particular. And you don't mind one bit because you know that your own life is not a single tale, but a patchwork quilt of happenings and occurrences um, and cross paths um, that compose the, the entirety of your existence. Uh, Colin McCann is a brilliant writer, in my opinion. I look forward to reading more of his writing at some point in the future. But for now, I will leave the world of his magnetic prose behind and haphazardly spin to that of another. Um, that covers pretty much everything I have to say about this book. I read uh, my review at Goodreads um, almost verbatim. Mm -hmm. um, I captured as best as I could um, what happens in the story, even though, as I said, um, since it's so many different storylines um, kind of crisscrossing each other and that it's hard you know to really describe this book as in a sentence or two or even quite a few as i just did um because it isn't about anything in particular it's just about really about life and making the best of it and recognizing um the beauty of it even sometimes it could be quite difficult to do so because there is also a great deal of tragedy and a great deal of despair. But sometimes you look up and who knows what type of incredible thing you'll see. Until next time, this is Roy. Um, signing off here at Roy's Book Reviews. Happy reading. Um, I hope you return for my thoughts on other books in the future.